Are Dhaka police playing both sides of the net? If Rick Perry quits, who will we laugh at? Oh, never mind. Has there ever been a better time to be a Duggar? For August 21st, 2015, from the stylish high-tech underground studios of Ribbit Media in seriously soupy Cranston, Rhode Island, this is News Undies. <laughs> For August 21st, 2015, this is News Undies, all the news that shouldn't be news. I'm Paul Torville with these headlines. Jared Fogle, the now former Subway sandwich pitch man, has negotiated a plea deal on child pornography charges, which, if approved by the court, will score him between 5 and 12 years in prison. As you may recall, back on July 10th, we covered the raid on Fogle's house in Zionsville, Indiana, in which computers and other property were seized. Subway has gumpishly tweeted, We no longer have a relationship with Jared and have no further comment. The Twitterverse was predictably unsympathetic. A scroll down Subway's Twitter page shows its primary concern appears to be shilling Lay's potato chips, which is where my head first goes when I think of eating fresh. The Coca-Cola Company, whom, as we learned in the 1964 Kubrick masterpiece, Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb, You Don't Want to Cheese Off, has formed a sort of uh, public health consortium to promote the idea that the key to ending obesity isn't so much cutting down on high-calorie snacks, it's making sure that you burn the calories that you take in. Well, yes... But given that many people are, or at least feel, trapped in sedentary life situations, doesn't it seem that tailoring your caloric intake to your activity level makes more sense than punching holes in your already busy and difficult to schedule life to burn off that 600 calories of coke you drank at work? Nah. If you're considering stealing something, say... Oh, a dildo. Christopher Hucko of Orland Park, Illinois, may have some lessons for you as a result of his experience at his local Lover's Lane store. An employee of the store had observed Hucko putting merchandise in his pants and then called the police. Police arrived and waited outside the store, waiting for Hucko to leave the store, of course, completing the theft. The officers apprehended him, and the teachable moment began. First, if you're going to try to steal something, you're not helping your case at all if you're completely obvious in the way that you take and or hide what you're trying to steal. Second, if you're confronted by police and asked, for example, what you've got stuffed in your pants, my penis is almost certainly not the answer they're looking for. If you are picked up for theft or shoplifting, having a pocket full of weed and a bowl in your possession will likely not induce the police to take pity on you. Third, if you've already established yourself as a less than successful criminal, that is to say, if you have any kind of arrest record, the police will find this out and you will probably not be getting off with a warning. Fourth, if you have any forms to sign while you're being booked? Because, you know, if you haven't learned lessons one through three, you will be booked. Signing the forms, Obama is a criminal, is probably not going to bring you any sympathy with your case when it comes to trial. And speaking of trials, the Dhaka Tribune is reporting that the Inspector General of Police, or IGP, has floated a not-too-subtle reminder to free thinkers that hurting one's religions, religious sentiments is a crime punishable by up to 14 years in prison. 
This reminder came in the wake of the murder of blogger Niladri Chatterjee Niloy. Niloy had posted on Facebook shortly before he was murdered that he had attempted to engage the police to protect him from people he suspected were following him. The message appears to be a little mixed and confusing. Because in the same press conference wherein the dire warning of prison time for hurting people's religious feelings was delivered, the IGP stated, If any blogger or freethinker suffers from such a threat, he can contact the local police or DB police in Dhaka. Police will ensure his security. And that anyone who's had their feelings hurt can contact the police uh, and file a case. Uh... So, what if I've written a blog that hurts my own feelings and I want to file a case against myself, but then I feel threatened by myself and need protection? Can I then contact the DB police and arrange protection? Can they figure that mess out? The alarm's always the green one. Up next, ooh, he's crazy. Let's follow him. Redeeming Commander Decker and... Joy of Spokane County! Hi. So here's an update. I have been cast as Thomas Putnam in the previously mentioned community theater production of The Crucible. As such, this will be the last full-length News Undies episode until after the play has had its run, which would be October 30th. I will try to get out short shows uh, on a weekly basis as previously scheduled. Wait. You didn't know there was a schedule? Seriously? All right, go to newsundies.com and uh, click on the schedule link, link on the uh, left-hand side. Um, there are six more shows scheduled between now and when the full-length episodes, uh, next full-length episode will be released. So if you'll be in the Providence area uh, for the weekend of uh, the 16th or the 23rd of October uh, and you're interested... Uh, why not come by and see me in the Rhode Island Stage Ensemble's production of The Crucible? Be great to meet you. And now, back to the show. Deflate Gate. The froth spraying out of the GOP clown car appears to be spattering on the traditionally more moderate Republicans. Case in point, U.S. Senator from Arizona John McCain, while attending a meeting with Navajo leaders about establishing a Code Talkers Museum, was effectively chased off the reservation by a group of protesters resisting a push by federal government and business interests to give away the water rights of the Navajo. That's okay, John. It's not like they're your constituents or can vote. Oh, uh, they are and they can. Good luck, John. And speaking of good luck, Rick Perry has now been indicted on two fel felony counts, abuse of power and coercion of a public servant. Charges which, if he is convicted, could get him a hundred and eight years in prison. But that's okay, because Perry appears to be unable to pay his campaign staff. So, on the bright side for Perry, the Opportunity and Freedom PAC has buckets of money to spend on pro-Perry ads, they just can't pay his campaign staff. And despite the felony indictments and running out of money, he apparently does not see the handwriting on the wall. Or maybe he sees it, he just can't read it! And speaking of illiteracy, Donald Trump has come out declaring that birthright citizenship is a bad thing. In case you are unaware, the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution st states that all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. And the applicability of this to children of immigrants born in the United States is supported by at least U.S. v. Wong Kim Ark, 169 U.S. 649, decided in 1898 at the height of anti-Chinese sentiment in the U.S. 
But that's okay. The Donald always gets what he wants. People sycophantically admiring his hairline, protection from creditors in bankruptcy court. And since Trump is now, by virtually any poll of likely GOP voters, the frontrunner, hopeless also rans are shoving each other aside to be the next to tow Trump's line. Senator Lindsey Graham, Governor Scott Walker, and, of all people, U.S.-born child of immigrants Louisiana Governor Piyush Bobby Jindal have all come out saying they favor eliminating birthright citizenship, which is perfectly aligned with the old Reagan-era Republican motto, I've got mine, go fuck yourself. And just when you thought the question of immigration and citizenship couldn't get any more ridiculous, a contingent of birthers is now coming out and questioning the citizenship and therefore the eligibility to run for the presidency of a number of Republican candidates. Four of the 17 have drawn specific scrutiny. Ted Cruz, of course, Marco Rubio, little surprise there, Rick Santorum, did not see that coming, and, wait for it, Louisiana Governor Piyush Bobby Jindal. And then uh, Jeb Bush schooled us all, reporting that toppling Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein was a good deal. For whom, Mr. Bush? For whom? United Defense, BAE, Halliburton? Certainly not for the estimated half million people killed as a direct result of the conflict, or the tens of thousands of U.S. service members returning home with debilitating physical and psychological trauma. I suppose you didn't make uh, make out too badly. Well, good for you. Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar are hoping, apparently, to cash in on their son Josh's incestuous child molestery indiscretions, pitching a new reality show wherein they hope to counsel sexually abused children. TLC, which canceled the Duggars' obvious exploitation fest, once the news of Josh's pedophilic misadventures came to light, is airing a documentary in, on August 30th called Breaking the Silence, which explores child abuse. According to Us Magazine, TLC has been working with the Duggars on this project, and it will include Duggar daughters Jill and Jessica. Now, TLC has long left behind its roots in science education, having devolved into a shameless exploiter of superstition, mental illness, voyeurism, and vanity, typified by shows like Long Island Medium, Hoarders, My 600-Pound Life, and Say Yes to the Dress. The network is venturing into new territory now, where it exploits the outcomes of its own exploitation of crazy people. If there wasn't an actual human cost to this, I think I could see this as being something like the end of Star Trek The Motion Picture, where after Decker and Ilea probe thing, you know, they emerged, uh, resulting in a new higher being, or whatever. Except it's TLC, and Kate Gosselin is still on TV. And as if that wasn't enough to make a sane person open a vessel, eat a cart of oxy, and chug a couple bottles of wine, Jessica Hayes of Fort Wayne, Indiana, has married Jesus in a wedding ceremony officiated by actual Catholic clergy. She is now a consecrated virgin, one of around 3,000. Uh, in the world. The city of Gloucester, Massachusetts, has been dealing with a heroin problem for quite a while. Back in June, the city's police chief, Leonard Campanello, set a policy for his officers to not arrest drug users who approach them for help. Campanello reports that, despite his early skepticism, he is pleased with the results. With 116 people placed in addiction treatment and no criminal charges filed since June 1st. Is this the right way to go? Here are Pig and Sheep with their thoughts. Absolutely not. Drugs are evil and the police have to not accommodate druggies. Lock them up. I'll be right back. Uh, it's time for me to take my painkillers. 
The real drug problem isn't so much about people taking drugs. It's more that the government has arbitrarily identified some drugs as medicinal and some as recreational and others as just plain illegal. By stigmatizing and criminalizing users of illegal drugs rather than treating the underlying issues does nothing to benefit or help these drug users or their families. All it does is feed the prison industrial complex and demonize certain ethnic and economic classes. Bravo, Chief Campanello. Bravo. That's what Pig and Sheep think. What are your thoughts? Email them to ovcomments at newsundies.com. Good, Carl. Still to come, how not to be seen. And, so you say you want a ballpark. Whether you prefer post-industrial vampire trance music or neo-gothic nerdcore speed thrash, Royal Records is the record store for you. Royal Records has albums and cassettes from many of your favorite artists, including The Letterman, The Righteous Brothers, The Insane Clown Posse, The Slipknots, and The Nine Inch Nails. No matter your taste, you'll find the records and tapes you love at Royal Records, Main Street Downtown. Open weekdays from 10 to 4. And now, here's Moose Weintraub with a Sports Half Minute. Moose Weintraub Sports Half Minute It's a whole half minute of sports 30 seconds of sports Moose Weintraub Sports Half Minute This is your Sports Half Minute. I'm Moose Weintraub. NCAA athletes threatening to unionize put a hurt... Moose Weintraub Sports Half Minute Thanks, Moose. Always a great report from Moose. The delightfully named Travis Austin Joy of Spokane County, Washington, has been arrested. Why, you ask? Well, someone turned in a video camera with videos depicting the 45-year-old performing sex acts with three dogs and a, wait for it, horse. He's being charged with multiple counts of animal cruelty for the videos, and two additional counts of harassment for lobbing death threats at the people he thinks turned him in. There are countless questions to ask an individual like this, but foremost in my mind is, what would motivate you to tape it? I mean, I, I find it hard to believe that a more or less normally socialized person, you know, the sort of person who can hold a job, pay bills, operate a microwave, can reach the age of 40 without getting some kind of an inkling that if you do have very, very special feelings for your pets, or your friend's pet in the case of the horse, that you probably shouldn't act on those feelings. And if you do act on those feelings, which you should not, if you create and retain evidence of such acts, well, the others probably won't understand your special bond with Fido. It would seem to me that would be the sort of thing that would readily occur to someone eligible for, you know, a library card. I mean, who is this guy, anyway? The long-lost 20th Duggar? And finally, and I do mean finally, we all saw this coming, didn't we? Back when I lived in San Diego, and Petco Park was being considered as a downtown revitalization project, and uh, up until most of the construction delays were resolved, and in all that time, the park was a very contentious part of the city's life. Completed in 2004, the construction cost nearly a half a billion dollars, well over half a billion adjusted for inflation. $300 million of the construction cost came from the city of San Diego, meaning the taxpayers. Some 17,000 new jobs were promised in downtown as a result of the new park going in. In the park's first 10 years, the net job growth in downtown has been Ready for this? 29. 
And on the bright side, the park has encouraged residential developers to add nearly 15,000 new housing units in downtown. But uh, annual game attendance at the park has fallen by nearly a third since the park's opening. Much of the retail space that went in when the park was built either went vacant after a period of occupancy or has never been occupied. Business owners cite high rents and insufficient traffic. To make matters worse, the Padres, never a standout team, have performed worse since moving from the multi-purpose Qualcomm Stadium to the new purpose-built Petco Park, even though the city was promised that the increased revenue generated by the park would enable the Padres to attract better players and be a more winning team. Alas, not so much. The city of San Diego is now reflecting on what the development of Petco Park has done for, and perhaps more importantly, to the city. The inspiration for this reflection comes from the city's other major sports team, the San Diego Chargers, demanding a new downtown stadium. The Chargers, like the Padres, have never won a national championship. Now, when I lived in San Diego and the Padres were threatening to leave the city if they didn't get a new ballpark, my attitude was, okay, go, good luck. And here in Providence, Rhode Island, we also stand at such a juncture. The local AAA club, the Pawtucket Red Sox, are demanding a new ballpark in Providence, or they'll take their baseball magic elsewhere. You'll never guess where I stand on this one. Well, that's all for this edition of News Undies. If you see news that shouldn't be news, you can submit your story tips online at newsundies.com or on Twitter with the hashtag NUSTIP. News Undies is a weekly show. We'll be back on Friday, August 28th with fresh undies. If you like this video, please like this video. If you like the show, please spread the word. Got a comment, question, or suggestion? Leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube, circle us on Google+, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, ignore us on MySpace, tell your friends, and buy News Undies Kitsch at NewsUndies.com. Thanks for watching. For all of us here at News Undies, until next time, I'm Paul Torville. After that, I might be playing catch with somebody I don't know. I don't even have any idea why I said that. I just want to tell you good luck. We're all counting on you.